Hi everybody, welcome back. Glad you could join me once again to start going through some additional tutorials to make sure you guys are familiar with using MetaTrader. All right, on this particular tutorial, we're gonna go through using indicators. Oh, hey guys, remember I, in the last video I showed you how to use a stop loss? Well, you notice that my stop loss point is now a little bit higher than my order entry. So if you look at the price, I put in my price at 1.45089 and with the buy order, my stop loss is now 45,115. So I've already locked in some profit. If it goes down past my, uh, my original, uh, past the stop loss, I'll cash out with a small little profit here. So just wanted to show you how that actually works. Okay, so let's get back to the task at hand, looking at indicators. Right now, there's one indicator currently on the chart. It's this line right here, it's a moving average. I'm gonna get rid of that. I just right click, I can hit delete indicator. I can also bring up a complete list of indicators. So I'm just gonna hit delete indicator and begin to proceed with showing you how to place indicators in your charts. A couple of ways of doing it. First way, there's a button right up here, indicators. Click onto it and I can, I can put in the last, uh, the indicator that I've let from the last one that I put on. So this short, this shows the, the list of indicators that recently I've put on. Trend, these are the the standard indicators that come with MetaTrader regarding uh, regarding trend, oscillators, volumes, Bill Williams, and the custom. Those are custom indicators that either you downloaded or you've made you might have made yourself and included within the platform and you want to start using. So that's one way of doing it. The other way, let me just close off this market watch, is using Navigator. And again, if you're not, if Navigator isn't there, for example, if it's closed, this is the button that you click to access Navigator. All right, I can go to Indicators and throw something on. So let's say I'm gonna choose Commodity Channel Index. Put it on, and I can choose the period how to apply it, here in this case it defaults to typical price, the style, this shows the type of line that I'd like to use, and then the thickness of that particular line. I can also choose fixed minimum and fixed maximum. Uh, those are just fixing the scale. I'm gonna leave that as is. Levels, I can also add levels visually for me to help, uh, it just basically helps me see what's going on so I can make a decision. Visualization, and you can add additional points too. If you're familiar with Commodity Channel Index, uh, the marks that are typically um, associated with potential reversals are at 100, minus 100, as well as 200 or 250. I'm gonna throw in a zero, so we can look at zero line rejects um, and make a decision based on that, specific with Commodity Channel Index. And guys, if I'm going over your head, talking what the heck is a zero line reject, that's just a, uh, that is specific to this particular indicator of understanding or anticipating what price is gonna actually do. And that's one of the techniques. Don't worry about it too much. Visualization. I can choose to have this particular indicator only appear on specific time frames. Right now, it's showing all time frames. But let's say I wanted to keep it clear because I have multiple indicators showing up at different points in time. I can click on all and I can choose when I want this indicator to show up at what time frame. Perhaps all I only want it to show up in the 15 minute time frame. That's it. It'll disappear when I click on the buttons to change the time frame. So I'll hit OK. There we go. Shows up in the bottom. So let me go back up here. Let's say if I hit 30 minute charts, it disappears. Go back to the 15 minute chart. There it is again. So now let's say I wanted to alter this. I can just right click on the indicator, hit properties, go back to visualization, uncheck all time frames, hit OK. There we go. It's back up and running now. All right. So that's pretty much it, guys. I can choose any indicator that I want and throw it on. All right. So what I want to show you now is how to add indicators on top of each other to give you some information, different perspective. So let me get rid of the CCI. 
Notice here that I right clicked and I didn't come up with the there the context menu here. So let's say if that happens, right click, I can go to indicator list up here and it'll show me a list of all the indicators. Click, delete, and close. So I'm going to choose the indicator. Whoops, sorry. Indicator. I'm going to use volumes. There we go. Make these a little bit thicker so it's easier to see. Hit OK. There we go. You see in the bottom of the screen, we see the volume associated with each bar. Now, the, the, you may find this very easy to see. Uh, one of the ways that I can make this a little bit simpler, or perhaps more meaningful, now that's debatable. There we go. Now that I have volumes on the bottom part of the chart, what I can do is I may have a rule that based on an average of the volumes, I may choose to take action or it may, ask, it may beg the question that I need to, um, to consider, the, consider the price action and the movement a little more closely. So let me put a moving average on the volumes. So what I'll do is I'll go over to my navigator side. I'll go to moving average and I will drag that into the window that I want the moving average to go on to. So I let go, and now it's asking for the parameters. Period, moving average is simple, and apply to. This is the box you want to pay attention to. Close. This means it'll apply the moving average to the close, price close, and this will go into the main chart area, like right up here. Well, that's not what we want. I'm not looking at applying a moving average to the close. I want to apply the moving average to the volumes. So I, I take the drop down menu and I choose first indicators data. And I'll change the color so it really stands out. I'll put it to black. Make the line a little bit thicker. And I hit OK. There we go. Now the average is being applied to volumes and not the close price. And we can see here, there's volumes, and there's moving average on the volumes. There we go. So you can take a look at, you may have a rule based on 14 moving average. If something is substantially larger, for example, here's a spike right here. And then we notice the price action drops down. That might be your signal to say, hey, you know what? Especially since it tried poking out of this area of um, a resistance, tried poking out. But the price action went downwards. You can see the close, it went down. That might be a signal for you to say, you know what, that's a sell for sure. And sure enough, it dips down. That's just one way of using one indicators together. All right, guys, thanks very much for checking out this tutorial. Come back for the next one, and we'll go in greater detail on how to use line studies in order to make decisions on which way to trade. Thanks very much, and we'll see you soon.